Hello, you're watching Swipe, and here's what's coming up for you this week. We've got all the need-to-know highlights from the world's largest phone show. Plus, the best games to play on mobile, including a pocket-sized game to fall in love with. And then put your phones down to see Alex discover how artificial intelligence is being used to tackle poaching. It's that time of year, the week when tech's movers and shakers head to the world's biggest phone show. It means we get to see how wireless devices will impress us next. So here's what's been going on at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. These are the crowds eager to witness the latest round in a major battle, the battle of the smartphones. It's at this industry gathering that some of the biggest mobile brands, apart from Apple, announce new handsets and tell us what we'll want to be carrying around in our pockets over the next year. And S9 Plus. Samsung, as expected, made headlines early on with its new Galaxy S9, featuring improved cameras and a way to turn selfies into emojis. And there it is. Essentially, the S9 isn't massively different cosmetically to the S8 to an uneducated consumer. They'll look at it and think it looks similar. So Samsung really needed to land some key features like the camera, like the sound, like the emojis and all those things to make people realize that it is a step up from the last model. Nokia announced five new phones, including another retro throwback, a revamped 8810. You remember that slider phone from the 90s. Sony served up two new models with cameras able to record in 4K high definition. Huawei, meanwhile, showed us the power and intelligence of its phones by using one to drive a car. The company also launched a laptop and tablet and its first 5G chip for mobile devices. While we're talking 5G, I'm told we'll start seeing the wireless technology in some handsets next year before a wider rollout that should benefit us all. 5G is trying to build an infrastructure beyond just handsets as we know them. And what I mean by that are connected devices, Internet of Things, smart cities. It's not just phones at MWC. You know any good tech event has a multitude of gadgets demonstrating technology's best, boldest and sometimes questionable uses. Coffee decorated with your own selfie, anyone? Internet of Things uses and biometrics are hot topics here, as is the buzz around artificial intelligence. Smartphone makers currently use AI for things like personal assistance, image recognition and learning our habits. But there's a lot more to come. The most impressive thing about AI is we do not yet know what AI is going to do for us. It's think about the internet, think about 1996. It's that point with AI. So the key thing though is we're just going to have to make that shift between being mobile first to AI first. Perhaps the most well-known use of AI though remains with robots. These ones know how to serve coffee, teach coding and help improve your posture. Surely it won't be long now before your phone can do all that too. So given that this is the week of the world's largest phone show, there's only one kind of game that we want to feature in our games review segment. The kind you play on a handset. Here's Gav with his picks. Annapurna Pictures are a film release company that you might know for films like Phantom Thread, Zero Dark Thirty and Her, but they've actually started releasing really, really good games in the last year or so. One of those games is Gora Goa, which is a puzzle art game, which you basically are presented with a bunch of pictures, like really, really lovely stuff as well for a mobile game, and you have to sort of explore them and really weirdly interact with them to try and figure out what the link is between them, which advances the story that you're doing. Now, the themes that the paintings cover are quite hefty, which you might not think is good for a mobile game, but I think it's brilliant because it's not just something that you play passively, it's something that you're super into, and you've really got to put a lot of time into it to get something out of it, which for a mobile game is actually pretty good. Florence is another game from Annapurna Pictures. It's basically a short story in your pocket where you follow this girl, Florence, um, doing sort of menial tasks. That's the game bit where you're just sort of like tapping to put shoes away and things like that. Um, but then she meets someone and you start dating them and then you start doing these little sort of puzzles that end up being your conversations with the person. If you think of it like a short story where by the end you're gonna have this massive connection to this character that you didn't know before, I've never really felt like that 
play in a game before because you know you, you read a short story on a Kindle you sort of read it you do have a connection and then you go whereas this you're actually playing through and you feel a little bit more invested because of these menial tasks that you've helped her with um, it's just brilliant Death Road to Canada is more like a mobile game that we kind of would want. Um, you've basically got to get from Florida to Canada, which doesn't sound that hard, except the road is full of zombies, obviously. Uh, it's kind of like an action RPG where you, you interact with like these weird little people on your way that have been living their lives since the sort of zombie apocalypse kicked off. And they're all trying to either help you or hinder you as you find your way to Canada. Um, you find yourself pretty immersed in it because the game stuff, even though it's quite basic, it's really nice to play and it just feels really intuitive and you kind of really, really get into it and without realising it, you're totally into the story as well, which sounds really simple, but, you know, getting from one place to another, it's pretty easy really. X-Files Deep State is almost a perfect mobile game. It's this weird little mystery that is based around the game element of finding stuff. You're kind of given little clues on the mystery that you're solving. So you might be in someone's house looking for clues. You're literally looking for clues, that's what you're doing. And the timer runs out, so there's a weird sort of uh, urgency to it that you've really got to keep an eye on because uh, obviously your points go down the longer you take for it. I'm sure some people will absolutely love this. I found it quite frustrating, but I did really like the story element of it, and you interact with like Mulder and Scully and other characters from the X-Files universe. So that part I really, really liked. Actually looking for things and looking for clues, I'm rubbish at. So that's the best of what's been going on in the world of mobile. Now here's a quick look at what else has been happening in tech this week. Amazon has bought a company that makes doorbells which allow you to see who's at the front door when you're not home. Analysts see the deal with Ring, reportedly worth over a billion dollars, as a sign that Amazon wants to expand its home security products and deliveries inside customers' homes. British car maker Jaguar Land Rover has showed us its first fully electric vehicle. The iPACE runs on lithium-ion battery and can apparently be charged to up to 80% in 45 minutes. Integrated with the Alexa service, a driver will be able to ask the car questions. It'll set you back around £63,500 though. 4G connectivity will soon be available on the moon. Vodafone Germany and Nokia are working with private space firm PT Scientist to create the first 4G lunar network by next year. Online scammers could buy your entire personal identity for just £820. Research by comparison site top10vpn.com has also found that dark web criminals can buy your passport details for as little as £40. Music streaming service Spotify has filed paperwork to sell shares publicly on the New York Stock Exchange. The firm says the move could value the world's biggest streaming service at around $23 billion. That's £16.5 billion. And crypto jacking attacks in the UK have gone up by 1,200% in just a few months, researchers have told Sky News. Crypto jacking involves using someone else's computer to mine cryptocurrencies. We go from tech and machines to animals now because this week Alex has been finding out how artificial intelligence is being used to help tackle animal poaching. This lot are a curious bunch. These Emperor Tamarin and Red TT monkeys are just some of the residents here at ZSL London Zoo. And it doesn't take long for them to spot the arrival of cameras in their rainforest enclosure. Researchers here have teamed up with Google using artificial intelligence to monitor critically endangered species and their habitats and to spot poachers. Now the centre of all this conservation work are these. This is a camera trap, effectively a motion triggered camera. And this one sends the information back to base via a mobile phone network. And it's there that the images of the animals are downloaded before being uploaded to the cloud where machine learning takes a look and identifies the animals that this has captured. It takes a human hours, if not days, to sift through all the images and tag them when they're collected in the wild. Google's algorithm is now being tasked with this project, and it could save time and money. Well, machine learning has the potential to really speed up our analysis of these images to um, help species identification. It also helps us detect poachers in the field. We can download the algorithms to sit on the camera traps themselves so they can detect uh, humans in the images in real time and raise alerts of those in protected areas so that we can respond to those threats. 
Put simply, machine learning is a practical application of artificial intelligence. By feeding images into this algorithm, the team have trained it to recognize different species. But there's a catch. Subtle variations can baffle even the most complex and sophisticated algorithms in a way that just simply isn't the case with humans. In December, a team in America fooled Google's algorithm into thinking a picture of skiers was a dog. So can we really trust machine learning? As you start uh, creating more extensive and, and uh, models which are trained on a, a much larger data sets, they actually start becoming more resilient to changes in pixels and so on, um, um, and being able to be more accurate, really. Um, so there's a, I think there's an aspect which is, is, is simply related to the quantity and the, and the depth of training. If we're to trust AI in other areas, like driverless cars, the risk from technical tricks has to be addressed. So teaming up with conservationists and training algorithms to recognize species is just one of the ways that machine learning is being toughened up and trained for new challenges in the future. Alex Morgan, Sky News. Well, that's it for this week's show. Join us again for more Swipe next week. And in the meantime, follow us on Twitter at Sky News Swipe. Bye-bye.